John B. Watson, born January 9, 1878, died September 25, 1958, at the age of 80, is an American psychologist who classified and broadcasted the study of behaviorism, a psychological approach which emphasizes scientific and objective methods of investigation. Watson's idea of behaviorism has had a long-lasting impact on the nature versus nurture debate. More exclusively, the strong role early experiences play in shaping personality. Once he received his PhD in psychology from the University of Chicago, he became a professor of psychology at the Johns Hopkins University and later established a laboratory for research in animal psychology. He is remembered for his research on the conditioning process involving the Little Albert experiment in which he revealed that emotional reactions could be conditioned in people. Little Albert Experiment The Little Albert Experiment was carried out in 1919 to show classical conditioning in humans. The experiment was carried out on a nine-month-old baby who hadn't demonstrated any fears of rats. When Albert was 11 months old, a rat was placed on a table and he didn't develop any fear of it. After which, whenever Albert tried to touch the rat, Watson would bang a hammer, which resulted in Albert crying hysterically. Little Albert not only developed the fear of rats, but also the fear of fluffy objects. This can also be called generalization. Albert's mother received one dollar for making her son participate in the experiment. Albert later died at six years old from hydrocephalus which is a buildup of fluids in the cavities within the brain. Loud noise that greatly upset and frightened Albert. After six such pairings of the loud noise in the rat, it was believed that the boy had been conditioned to fear white rats. That is, Albert was now expected to react fearfully to white rats whether the rats were paired with loud noises or not. In this next film sequence, we see Albert interacting with a white rat after the conditioning process. The Kerplunk experiment. The Kerplunk experiment was a stimulus and response experiment conducted on rats. It demonstrated the ability to turn voluntary motor responses into conditioned responses. In the experiment, rats were trained to run straight or alley-like in a maze for a small food reward, which was placed at the end of the alley. Watson found that after training the rats well at running in the maze, they performed it almost automatically. However, due to the stimuli from the maze, their behavior became more like a series of associated movements instead of stimuli from the outside world. Color vision in monkey research. Watson's study of vision focused on two rhesus and one Cebus monkey, testing the delicacy of the white light vision of the monkey's vision and their sensitivity to differences in the size and form of visual stimuli. To test this, Watson projected two bands of light of different colors onto a screen, one being the correct color and the other one being incorrect. Behind the bands of light were two small boxes, both containing grapes, behind an opaque screen so that the monkey would not be immediately drawn to it before the trial. At the beginning of each trial, the monkey would move towards the apparatus and make the choice of color. If the monkey made the correct choice, he would be allowed to eat the grape, but if he did not make the right choice, Watson would pull the monkey away before he could eat the grape in the box as a consequence. The results showed that monkeys were not able to see red of a red-green discrimination, instead making a green no-color distinction. Another word was Watson found that blue-yellow discrimination could be trained more quickly than a red-green discrimination. Lastly, Watson's most interesting finding was that the monkey would not freely take the available food if it was placed in the incorrect color choice area. It would only eat it as a consequence of the correct choice. His work in experimental animal psychology played a major role in shaping Watson's role as a comparative psychologist and hints at the beginnings of his most well-known study of classical behaviorism. Conclusion John Watson being labeled as the father of behaviorism, he focused on the methodology and the modification of it. He published an article by the name Psychology as the Behaviorist Views It, 
This article being one of the greatest publication in behaviorism and is said to be called the manifesto of behaviorism. His interest extended into many areas of the investigation of behavior, including what would now be called ethology, comparative psychology, psychopsychology, neuropsychology, and of course, behavior analysts. All John Watson wanted was to make psychology more scientifically acceptable, and that he did.